is Sarah from Sarah B. Calligraphy and I am here to show you my process of how I create a styled mock-up proof. And I am a stationer and calligrapher who deals with wedding invitations, anything calligraphy pretty much, and also branding design and consultations. I hope that you enjoy this tutorial and I cannot wait for you to keep on watching. Now this is for the client who really wants to see what their pieces look like all together and I am totally on board with that. I equate stationery and invitation design to branding design because you want to make sure that everything's nice and cohesive and everything just flows really well. In this tutorial I'm going to be using InDesign but you can also use Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. I prefer to do InDesign because I can plug in the image is super easily and it's just faster for me. Uh, for Illustrator you would have to plug in each individual image and resize each one. Now that can definitely get kind of uh, tiring and just wasteful honestly for your time because you would have to be doing that for multiple pieces and also for multiple clients. I like to have a master file where it's blank and I can just quickly drag and drop the images and then if I want to I can move it a little bit if I don't have the if I don't need to have the envelope design then I can just delete that or if I don't have a details card then I can like delete that and then rearrange how I like. I'd also like to mention that the stock images are created by Emma Rose company so these images are awesome because there's a lot of blank space in the middle and that's where we're going to put our invitation design. I'll also add a little link here in case you just don't want to look at the description box. So I use her stock images because I don't trust myself to do it. I feel like I would be wasting a lot of time and a lot of effort when I could just buy something that's less than $12. I mean I can skip out on Starbucks or skip out on a hamburger for a day if I need to and buy a stock image that I'm going to be able to use over and over again and make my clients really see how their invitations are going to look. Now I'm going to mention stationery and invitations a lot. Now this does not exclude things such as uh, branding design for like letterheads, envelopes, business cards, you can use this tactic for those as well and send to your clients so that way they can see how everything fits together and that you actually have a very cohesive vision for them. So let's get on with the tutorial. I hope you enjoy it. Let me start off by saying that I have actually created the single proofs of like the RCP, the invitation, just the entire suite. So let's get started. First, I want to create a new document, and I'm going to go in there and create a document in inches. So I already know the dimensions of my workspace, and that is going to actually be 11 by 7.333 inches. Now that I have created the document size, I am going to pull in an image block so that I can quickly place my images in it. The image for my background is actually going to be from Emma Rose Company. She has a new line of stock images that you should definitely go check out. The reason why I use an image block instead of a regular rectangle is because I can now easily place the images super quickly. So I'm going to put the image in now I'm going to make sure that it fits my box perfectly and I've already sized Emma Rose's images so that way I know the dimensions perfectly. So let's say I'm not really filling this background and I want to change another one. I can easily select from my files a new background and then just plug it in. It's super easy and it keeps the constraints on my proportions. Next I create even more image blocks and these are going to house the specific pieces of the invitation.
After I create all of the appropriate box sizes, I'm going to select all of them and then shrink them down just a little bit so that way it actually fits in the space of the background. Now I'm going to place them around a little bit and see kind of how I want them to be and then find the actual images. This is actually the point where I realized that I have one too many boxes, so I am going to delete that and then move things around just a little bit more. Also, if you need to change the size of the boxes, you can definitely do that. The reason why I created these as PNGs is so that way I can see the background. It's transparent, especially for shapes that are a little irregular. And also, when I do a drop shadow, it's not going to be the entire image box. It's actually going to be the actual image shape. <laughs> You can actually move the entire image and the box at the same time by holding down shift and command and then just simply resizing it. As you can see, I moved some things around and deleted something, so now it's time for the drop shadow. The drop shadow isn't supposed to make it look exactly realistic, but it does help the client visualize what their pieces look like in a more in depth way. I like to make the opacity a lot lighter and also move the X and Y offsets. Just remember where the shadows of the florals and the leaves are pointing because that's where you want the shadows of your invitation pieces to be pointing as well. To remove the lines and be able to see the overall piece you can either hide the edges or you can press shift w and it will create a bigger image for you to see you can also now change up any of the invitation pieces as long as you keep the master version so that way you won't have to redo all of these steps again now you can exchange the invitation with the actual save the date if you wanted to depending on which stage of the process you're in Awesome, you are now finished with the design. Go ahead and save it. You can save it as the main and design file and then later on save it as a PDF file to easily send it to your clients. So that's the end of the tutorial. Like I said, it's very easy, it's quick and simple and you can keep that master file copy for use on later projects. And you won't have to redo the drop shadows or resize anything. The only thing you would have to do is like maybe change out the background and then of course change out the images for the proofs. I actually use Dubsado to create my proofs and you can sign up for that for a free trial up to three clients. So let's say you use Dubsado for 20 years, but who knows your circumstances. You could have 20 years of Dubsado and not have to pay for anything because it's up to three clients. It doesn't matter the time frame, it matters how many clients that you actually have in the program. So the coupon code for that is going to be right here. It's Sarah B. Kalig, and you get 20% off your monthly and yearly plan. It does not go towards the lifetime plan, but I promise you that it's so worth it. By the way, I'm not being pay to say anything about Dubsado or Emma Rose Company's businesses. I just really love their products. It's very high quality and it really translates the quality from my work to the client. So if you have any questions or concerns, please comment below or message me on Instagram at Sarah B. Calligraphy. I'll also link my website, sarahbcalligraphy.com so you can see some of my work. And then, of course, follow me on social media so you can keep up with all of my pretty paper and ink adventures. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope that you learned something. And if you have any suggestions about future videos, please comment below. And I will try my best to create those for you. I will talk to you later. Bye.